Hello guys, welcome to my channel. In the last video, I talked about how to use the image trace inside of Affinity Studio, how to create stunning logo inside of Affinity Studio using the Vector Studio, and how to also turn black and white photo into color photos. All right? Before I proceed, if you've not subscribed to this channel and you're a viewer, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the videos I'm talking about. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can design a spot banner like this inside of Affinity Studio. Without having to say much, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my page size like this. And um, I'm going to use custom size. So all of this stays the same. And um, I'm going to turn on the ad board, right? So I'm going to click create document like this. Okay, so as you can see, I have my document opened up with my ad board shown like this. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of my ad board. I'm going to give it this color. And uh, this is something that I couldn't do well. I was using Adobe Illustrator, right? So this is the color code, all right? So I can change the color and um, yeah, that's the color code. And I'll select my field tool. I will use to bring out a gradient like this. Click on this point here and drag it like this, holding down your shift. And you want to change the color to this. All right, so I can redrag really again from this point to this point, and I can extend this. Then I can extend this line. I can drag it to any point that I want. Actually, it works best that way. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to my artistic text tool, and I'm just going to type something very, very simple. So this is. I'm going to change the font to the font that I've been using. Of course, I'm going to stay on that recent and this is the font I'm going to use. So I'm going to make this bigger like this, make this bigger. And of course, so that we have good contrast, I will duplicate this first, select the two of them, move them upward like this. And uh, move this one closer to it. Select the two of them and I'm going to change the color here. So the color I'm using is this color here. So you can copy my color code just beside the color wheel. Right? And um, use it for your design. You can see how easy this is. I'm going to move this upward. The one on top should be, on, should be up. I'm going to select the ellipse tool. Make sure it's white. No, control Z, that's. Okay, so let me just draw the ellipse first so we don't get confused about things. And I'm going to select a white here. Okay. So um, selecting the transparency tool, I'm going to drag from black to white. Move your outline, click here, remove it. We just want only the fill color, that's the white. So now we want to power clip this inside or make a clip mask of this inside the first. So just drag and drop on top of the letter like this. This is the easiest way to actually create a clipping mask inside of Affinity Studio, right? And this is the easiest I've seen across all the apps that I've used, right? So if I'm correct, you can highlight that. If I'm wrong, if I, you can highlight that. If there's a better way, you can highlight that inside of or down below in the comment section. So I'm just going to make this a size like this. Now on the character, I'm going to close up the spaces in between the texts. 
it's going to say I'm using the minus 20 and um, I'm just going to go back to my layers like this. So this is more like the first step in this design. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going over to where I have my source file. So I'm just going to drag and drop like this. This is the image I'm using. Uh, make this smaller just to fit into the canvas well. Right? But the image I'm using here has a background. So let's work on removing the background. So I'm going to go to the Pixel Studio, which I'm currently on right now. And I'm going to select this and I'm going to select Remove Background. Right? So when you click on Remove Background, it's going to only work if you have the Canva Pro, right? If you have a Canva Pro account, All right? So I'm just going to move the background here. It makes things easier. And I've come to understand that it's one of the best image, background image remover you can get online currently, All right? So kudos to Affinity and kudos to Canva. So I'm going to mask this because I have a strand of hair. Create the mask like this. And um, what you want to do is go over to your pen brush, select it. You can make it small by holding down your brackets. Make sure you have this as your settings. Okay. This is set to zero. And you can see in the brush is a live brush. So you're seeing what you're doing as you're hovering around that area like this. So I'm just going to go in gently and uh, remove that part. Um, Ctrl Z, let me do it neatly. You can zoom in and also reduce the size of your brush so that everything you're doing stays precise. So you can see it's gone. The tiny strand of hair is gone. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is click on convert image. I'm going to convert this so that I can make several adjustments to this. I'm going to switch back to my vector mode, right? And I'm going to select transparency tool. And this is one of the reasons why I had to convert it back, right? So that I can have this flexibility and not always go back to the brush. So there are several ways to actually do these things inside of affinity studio right so that's why it's important that you subscribe and uh, of course you don't miss my tutorial videos so i'm just going to go back to the pixel like this and i'm going to click on develop like i said this is like the camera raw inside of affinity studio so i'm going to click on okay Click on detail refinement, increase the radius while I increase the amount like this. And um, then also I'm going to bump up the clarity to like a hundred. You can see the difference. And um, when I'm done, I'm just simply going to, okay, let me increase the contrast. Not too much. This is fine. And vibrant a little bit. And um, let's see. This is the shadows and um, the highlights. So I'm just going to make minor settings here. And that's all. And when I'm done, I'm just going to cl click on develop. And um, ASAP. You can see the effect. All right. That's super amazing. So I'm going to go back to the Vector Studio like this. And um, of course, um, I'm going to go over to my resource again. Of course, you can get all of this inside the graphic smart designer premium assets. The link to download this asset is in the description of this video. So you can click yours to get yours where you have 
this amazing um, light effects, picture effects, backgrounds, and all other things. You have your templates, layer templates also, right? Inside of this bundle. So I'm just going to zoom up like this. And um, clicking on layer, I'm going to click on adjustments. Nope, no adjustments, sorry. I'm going to click here. Filters. And I'm going to select Gaussian Blur here like this. And I'm just going to increase the radius. And um, close this up. And um, you can see the difference. I'm just going to go to the blend mode and change this to screen. So that I can have this effect here. So I'm just going to go over to my rectangle tool, draw a rectangle here. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is change the color. All right. Click on transparency tool or fill tool instead. I'm going to go from red to, I'm going to select the blue. Yes, just the way I have it for the background originally. So with this, click on transparency and I'm going to make transparency from bottom here, from black to white. Then I'm going to drag this up like this. Yes. Then I'm going to adjust my fill. Make the blue darker like this. Good. So I can hide this so I can see this well. So make a duplicate copy of this, Ctrl J. And um, what you want to do is bring this downwards like this to the end of the layer and uh, make it bigger like this and um, change the blend mode to overlay you can see how nicely this blends right okay so i'm going to turn on the lights Right, and I'm going to go over to Frame Text Tool. I'm just going to drag and drop a frame here. Right click and uh, inside filler text. Now it's just going to be a random text, not necessarily a very, very serious text like that. Ctrl A to select everything and change the size. I think I'm okay with this. I'm just going to make it white and also change the font. Good. So I'm just going to select like this. Or better still, okay, so I'm going to use the curves adjustment layer under filter, and um, I'm just going to make the settings on the curve so that I have a good contrast on my entire composition. So, this is before. And this is after, you can see it makes a whole lot of difference. Okay, so um, switch to pixel and um, double click and make this black, click close and select your brush. 
and make sure your caps lock is turned off now what you want to do is yes use my settings make sure you're on the curves adjustment layer make sure you erase those things on the face like this so that the face is bright right the effect can be on the entire element of this design so i'm going to switch back to vector like this and um we're almost done with this Still inside of my smart designer premium asset, I'm gonna select premium backgrounds and um, I'm just gonna select any of these guys here, actually works. But I'm gonna use this drag and drop here like this. And um, then of course, I'm going to rotate this and um, I'm going to fill it up like this. Click on the settings, decide the blend mode, and um, you want to bring this down. We've covered this in our last flyer design session, right? So you can visit that video and um, watch all of this, why I explained why you need to do all of these things. So bring this downwards like this, then you can now close this. So I'm just going to go up here and first change my blend mode to screen. Like this. I'm going to increase the size. And you can see I have this all done nicely. Right? So guys. If you've learned something important in this video, make sure you click the like and make sure you share and make sure you're subscribed to this channel, right? So you can click on file exports and um, you can save your file with any of this JPEG, the PNG and all of this. Make sure your quality set to 100 and um, click on exports and you can just click on save guys all right guys um i will see you in the next video ciao